All right, you're on with the Kenny Briggs Show, and today my guest is Don Mudson. He's from Cable, Wisconsin, and he was a former Whites dealer, I believe. Don, welcome. Yes, that's right. Whites and, uh, and Fisher and uh, didn't have, didn't get gear, but just Whites and and Fisher mainly. Okay, how many years you've been hunting, Don? Oh, my. <laughs> well, actually, I started just shortly after high school. Okay. With, um, got into it with, with a fellow I got to know from, from River Falls who was a veteran from uh, Korean War mm-hmm. and who had done mine. He was locating mines with a oh. metal detector. Okay. And that's kind of how, that's kind of how it got all got started. So but nothing ever really, uh, it was time, and whenever we had, we'd do it, uh, we would go for a little bit and then hold off for a while. But, but I learned a lot from uh, the way he was, because he was kind of building them at the same time. Okay. Mo- most of his stuff, some of his stuff was pulse inductive, and that, that was really the, the forerunner to, which not a lot of people know that. that right. That forerunner to and so on. Right, yep. Yeah, I've got a couple of uh, pulse induction machines myself. The uh, Surfmaster 2, one of them. And I've got oh. another one too. But they yeah, seem I've to got, work uh, pretty good in clay and different types of soils. Yeah, right, exactly. And I got a TDI uh, when, when, I was a, when I was a dealer, so that uh, I've had that for quite a while, uh-huh. but but that that has really that has really worked out well, especially up here where there is just just a ton of iron in the ground. Oh, I imagine uh, some some places when you ground balance all you ground balance all at about about a ninety eight or ninety nine, oh. and then and then you wonder if you've really got the job done. Right. Yeah. That makes it hard detecting that way. Oh, boy, that's it ever, yeah. <laughs> so what do you uh, really enjoy does. mostly doing, hunting for coins, or you hunt for copper up there, or what do you mostly well, do? Well, you know, when we, moved up, when we moved up to Cable, of course, prior to that, why, I had the little coins here and coins there and we're down around River Falls and that stuff, but when we moved up to Cable up here, why, you know, back in those good old days when uh, a penny was really a penny, uh, you lose a penny or lose any kind of a coin for that matter. Oh, yeah. You spent all day looking for it. Yeah. And if you didn't find it, it was a really a sad case. So yeah. That was back you in don't the... find many, many coins up here, that old, old stuff. It, uh, people kept them and... Uh, but I like I well, I don't know I must have I've got an awful lot of uh, pennies just from being around around town and right. and around bars and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. to get out into the fields and all that stuff that that's uh, my main goal right now is to get some copper culture okay uh, stuff and that's and I just last. Last summer, I finally got one of the farmers around here who has has kind of been listen. It's not anti uh, detecting. It just it wasn't really interested. Okay. And he has about two thousand acres. Oh wow. Of field. So I finally got got him talked into letting me do it. So I've got I've got my work cut out for me now. Oh, well, I guess two thousand. That's <laughs> going to take the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, absolutely. And plus, I have I have my own eighty acres uh-huh. that I I feel that I have a lot of potential there. Oh, definitely. I know I have a couple of mounds, and uh, it, uh, and I just haven't just haven't had the time or taken the time, I guess, more than anything, right, to really start detecting on those. So, do you I'm use not the uh, TD into them or anything like that? But yeah, do you use the TDI all the time, or do you have another v, uh, no, VFR I, machine? The TDI and uh, I, well, 
when I was when I wasn't using the TDI and when I had whites, I was I was an MXT guy. Okay. That was. Uh, I mean, I got I got to using that so so good that I, most of the time I wouldn't have to dig it. I know what I would know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're back that way, you know, you used used to uh, knowing what you're uh, after, and you can know what the readings and stuff are. Exactly, and, and that you know that's one of the things with the young people today is that they get I think they get a little too restless and oh my machine isn't working and that sort of thing and you know, just keep plugging away at it and you learn it and learn it and learn it. Well, and, that's uh, the problem; they don't want to. Well, I think that that could possibly be be the, the yeah that that could be it. But uh, after a while, then that's really where the most fun comes in then is is when you know what it's all practically know what's there right you can know a nail like you wouldn't believe but right you uh, you can tell by the 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 tones just by listening to the tones you know what you're going to be digging pretty much oh yeah if you've been into it any length of time like you and i have had you know yeah it's uh because i've got but anyway it's uh nxt guy when i got into fisher I got into uh, the F-75. Okay, yep. And uh, I think that is probably, uh, I got it to be kind of good friends with uh, Steve Herzbach. And Steve is a great detectorist. He was in Alaska and he now now lives in Las Vegas. Or, well, not Las Vegas, but actually in Nevada. Okay. And he is one heck of a detectorist. He, I think you've, you've probably read some of his stuff and whatnot. And, and he, he still maintains that, as I, that the F-75 is probably one of the nicest swinging uh, machines that there is. Uh, if you, and if you get to learn that... Boy, they're, they're, and I'm still learning that. And I, I've had mine for, I don't know, 10 years now, right. probably. Yeah. And I'm looking at getting into really, uh, the Fisher line myself. Yeah, it's, uh, they're, uh, they're a little, they can get a little squirrely on you, but uh, they're, they're, they're a pretty good outfit, too. They uh-huh. are real good. Well, that's good. Yeah, I, I run uh, the V3i myself. Oh, okay, oh, oh, all right, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that's a dandy. We had uh, I I was lucky enough to to <laughs> to make a big win one time at at our local casino, which enabled me to uh, pay my way to go to Gaines Creek, which is in Alaska. Okay. Uh, and it's, and what what it is is. Uh, metal detecting for gold uh, in the old uh, barons part of uh, that the stuff that had been used and gone over before and they would just simply bulldoze it all up and yeah the tailings. Got to look around to it and all that stuff and then the and the, the biggest success that was there was that VI machine it uh-huh. was it was really really well done that was really was yeah, I enjoy mine, but yeah. I'd, I'd like to try the uh, that F seventy five. I know a few people have them, but maybe down the road I'll take a look at it. Well, yeah, and then of course that F seventy five. I bought, I, I got that mainly because I was thinking of going to Gaines Creek and so on. And Steve and I had talked about getting it because it's the it, it, when it's all metal, that is the best machine for all metal. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's just the clearest one there is. Uh-huh. And I got we when we got up there, I couldn't find diddly. I just I as well as it turns out, what really was happening, my my uh, coil was something happened to it. Oh, so no. when I got back, I had to send. I sent it back down to uh, Fisher and told them that hey, you know, this just didn't work out. I I was lucky enough to have taken my GMT along and I used that. 
okay. and phones and stuff like that. But that, uh, but that F-75, Steve, he had his F-75 there. My goodness, he phones, I was finding all kinds of really small stuff. Wow. And one guy we had there with an MXT, he had an old MXT, that thing, I don't know. It looked like it had been through the Civil War. But <laughs> he found more doggone gold. He, in the very last day, he found a 10.4-ounce solid gold nugget. Oh, wow. Oh, it was just beautiful. Wow. Just beautiful. Well, it comes down to somebody like that. The machine looks like it's been through the war, but he knows his machine. You bet he did. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. And that's, he says once in a while when I get when I get out here by myself, he says I talk to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> see, and that's the problem nowadays. The kids don't realize it; they just look at the screen, and if it says something yeah. on the screen, they go with that instead of listening for the tones. Yeah, best thing you can possibly do is try to pick up one that doesn't have a screen on it. Yeah, and just start listening. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, too bad Tesoro sh- closed their doors. Yeah, that's, I was surprised to hear that. Yeah. I really was. What's the most enjoyable thing about detecting that gets you going, Don? Well, I guess, I, I guess it's uh, the anticipation of what of what you might find. You kind of, <laughs> you know, some days you just kind of sit there and, oh, I'm just too, too lazy or too tired out to go do it, but <laughs> do it anyway and... Yeah, you get yourself built up, and oh, maybe maybe today's the day I find this or that, and, and right. so on. The other thing is, it's just just being out in the woods, and or even, uh, just in the fields too, but right. in the woods and that sort of thing, and just having a, a good time that way. Do you have any kids and that are into the hobby? So many people. It was uh, that. Do you have any kids that are in the hobby? No, I have no. Well. My son, Matthew, has a DFX, and uh, he and I, when we first got into it, uh, he was doing it pretty regularly, but now with his uh, his work has become more significant than, mm-hmm. than detecting, and so, he, so it's, it's been kind of taking precedence for, okay. for him. So. But otherwise, I do it alone, or I'm trying to get... Trying to find some people around here to, uh, you know, come along, but uh, right. it's 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 hard to find somebody that you know that wants to spend most of the day doing it and and not get tired out. But one of the things I found out though too, it's pretty. At, I'm I'm 78, and it's pretty easy to to get down on your knees. But I'm telling you, it is absolutely almost impossible to get back up. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I know. I have the same oh, problem. Man. I have the same so, problem. Yeah. So I this, this time around, I'm starting to do my exercises now. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's really the thing. You need to, to summer. Yeah, you need to start early and get yourself into it. You know, you can't just all of a sudden, oh, I'm going to go out there right now. You know? Oh God, no! No, I sure found that out. <laughs> you're going to be a hurting unit. Yeah, exactly. No, it, my you, detecting is. I don't know. I, I guess I kind of, along with the uh, metal detecting on the, on the from the Korean War and that sort of thing. I, I kind of got into it with uh, um, coin collecting and that stuff, uh-huh. that sort of thing, and and. Uh, that kind of, well, it kind of goes hand in hand with what you can find and what you might find and so on. Right. But um, it's, uh, how about, I've, uh, I've found a lot of, a lot of stuff to collect, uh, on collecting too. Yeah. How about, uh, a club? Do you belong to any of the clubs? Okay. Uh, uh, there was a club, there's a club in Hayward. Uh-huh. I belonged to that for quite a while. Okay. But then, uh, I don't know. I think it, it, it things like that kind of wear off after after so many years and so on, and and moves on and and that sort of thing. And 
and then and then you know, a little while I'll pick back up and go back at it and so I think it's kind of split up for a little while. And oh, okay. We'll have to see if we can rejuvenate it a little bit. Yeah. And I'd like to get one started up here somewhere, but there really aren't. There's really not enough detectors that are that are close by. Right. I mean, there's some in Ashland, there's some in Superior, and that sort of thing. But that's 40, 50, 60 miles. Yeah. I used to belong to the club here. I, in fact, I started the club here. And then I yeah. backed backed away from it. But yeah, in fact, I think I, I in fact I uh, I joined uh, when Tom and you and I were kind of going back and forth there and yeah uh, with the with the club there and uh, yeah so I I even joined it too right. Uh, in fact, I, I think you said, I think I got, a, I have a T-shirt somewhere with your with the club's <laughs> name on it. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's it, it's kind of uh, it get more and more people into it that I can see, but they're buying off the uh, big box stores, and nobody knows what the laws are, and they just go out and start digging and. That's where I got a problem with, you know. But that that's what that's going to eventually it's going to kill it because people will buy it and then six months later they they put it in the closet and, and then it stays in the closet. Yeah. And and you know and, and they they won't speak well of it when you're talking to somebody else. Well, yeah, I've got my detector it's sitting in the closet. It's been sitting there for. Two or three years now, I've not touched it, and, and so on. Right. But that, that, yeah, uh, it's when they come, to, they they come to someone like yourself, and and when I was in business for with it, you know, we had time to teach teach them, and and I think most of the people that I sold to and and kind of taught how to do it, and are still pretty much still into it. Right. Yeah. I know there's two guys from Minneapolis that. I didn't think they were, I, they were, I think when they bought it, they were like 60 years old, and that was quite some time ago, and they're still doing it. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm at 60, I turned 64 in April, and oh, okay. I, it feels, I, you know, I can feel it and stuff, getting down and up and down and up. I can't go like I used to. Oh, no. And then with this medical yeah. problems I've got. Kind of puts a damper on stuff too. So, yeah. But what are you oh, gonna yeah. do? Yeah. What about uh, yeah. most memorable find? What did you? What's the most memorable thing that you've ever found hunting? Well, uh, what are the? Uh, actually, it was two, two things. One was a really nice plum bob. Now, being a, being a, also being a carpenter and whatnot. Yeah. So I, I I do appreciate plum bobs. Oh yeah. Uh, it must it must have weighed from us it weighed at least two or three pounds. Wow! It's, it's really it's real it's all brass, really really nice. And the other thing that I that I found was when uh, when the, when they were cutting timber back in the cutting days, uh, they had these iron stamps that they would. And I can't think of the name of the thing right now. Yep, I know it what you mean. At the end of the end of the log. Yep, yep. I found one of those, which is really a really a rarity. Found that out on uh, out where there was a uh, old lumber camp. Okay. Do you hunt those and much now? The lumber camp. Uh, I've got one in line uh, to hunt this coming up uh, this summer. Okay. That. Uh, it used to be down on the Nemecogan. Oh, okay. And, and I, I, I was aware of it, but I didn't believe that it was as big as I have researched and have found out that it was something like three, four hundred guys. Oh, really? Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't, and initially I thought it was something like maybe, you know, three, four, three, thirty, forty guys, maybe tops a hundred. Yeah. But this was really, really big. I'll bet you there's and, a lot uh, of 
I old think it holds a lot of, uh, it's in the woods, but it holds a lot of potential. Oh, I bet you there's a lot of logging stamps and things that are laying around up there. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, yeah, I got that axe that I found down here in the flats. Oh, where yes, the, right, yep. Where the uh, largest sawmill once stood under one roof. And yeah, I, that, was, that was neat. I remember seeing that. that yeah, I like that, so. Yeah. Well. And then I think it was out of my land. Mm-hmm. Um, one day it was out too far. I built a cabin out there, and not too far up from the cabin, about 100 yards or so, it was, I was kind of messing around on the hillside overlooking a little lake. And, uh, boy, I hit this thing and it just it kept getting louder and louder and it kept kept on going. What in the world did I find? <laughs> well, it turned out it was a five-foot uh, one-man saw. Oh, really? It was a handle, handle, of course, was gone. Right, but, rotted away. But, the, but the, whoever lost it, lost it when it was, I'll bet they had never used to cut anything with it because I took it home, and, of course, I, I used to have a sawmill, too. Yep. And I, I brought it home, and I could cut a log with it. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that was really really neat. We have a lot in common. My dad used to have a sawmill. My dad and grandfather used to run a oh, sawmill. Really? So, yeah, I spent a lot of time in the mill and also in the woods cutting logs with them. Yeah, well, what I what I had was a wood miser sawmill. Okay. And uh, so it's a little different. It's a portable more than yeah. that. But right down the road, uh, I still go down there every once in a while too, uh, and look at the, there. There they have the uh, the regular the circular in, one in, in house sawmill. Big, yep. The big fifty inch wheel and so on. Right. That's what we and had. Is a, we had the round saw with the inserted tooths and stuff. Yep. Yeah, those that's, are. That's what I used to do in the summertime: is cut the lumber, and wintertime I used to be in the woods helping cut logs with my dad and grandfather. Oh, oh wow! You should have known that. I was. I could have, should have gotten me up here. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, well, yeah. can't think of anything else unless you can think of anything. No, I don't. I can't think of so much, but. Uh, I think you're doing a really, a really you're you're doing the detecting industry, or at least around here and whatever, a real a real service because the holding that school, uh, doing what you're doing, doing this sort of thing, like, like tonight, really counts and it really adds to the to the flavor of the whole thing. I just remember a while back or when I was. When you were saying that you might be getting a little static from whites and that stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, we straightened that out pretty quickly. Yep. And they under they have a full understanding if they didn't before as, as to what you do do. And it, it is, as far as I'm concerned, it's a very very good service. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I enjoy showing people how to uh, metal detect and stuff. In fact, we've got. Our uh, our training session coming up again in May. Yeah. We're going to have two sessions this year. And Beautiful. It's going to be 10 people at a time. And because it, it's too hard, if I get too many in one one group, it's hard to split them up and anybody, you know, learn anything with it. So, well, yeah, and then you get two different levels of knowledge, uh, or a couple of different levels of knowledge, and you don't, you know, it's hard to work with that something like that too. I would think. Right, and then Mike, my uh, hunting partner, Mike Schoonover, he hunts with the same machines that I do, so oh, good. he uh, he assists me as a in the training of people. So what we do is split it up. So he'll take five people, I'll take five people. We'll go through Wonderful. proper digging techniques and target recovery. That's the two different yep. stations that we have during the training. So yep. we know that people, this is the way you're trained your to hole. do it. <laughs> yeah, get it right, you know. <laughs> oh, that's that's a sore sore item with myself. I, yeah. I see it every once in a while. but Yeah, I see it man. quite often. Yeah. And I mean... 
And you see this stuff on uh, YouTube also. They don't use a towel. Yeah. The dirt is scattered all over. They don't do yeah, proper. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, they don't do proper holes and stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. And it it, it really is. It's and it's just so disrespectful. That's the yeah. That's the that bad part. And I they're agree. showing the young people how to do that. Uh, oh, I'll tell you. But no. And then some of them anyway, I, little I trespassing and stuff. You. Doing well, what you're doing. <laughs> well, I thank you. I enjoy doing it. Good. I'll continue doing, doing it too. until <laughs> the good Lord doesn't want me to. <laughs> right. Yeah. But. Exactly. Well, I want to thank you for being on my show, Don. Well, thank you for having me on the show. My goodness sake. I it, enjoy it. And, it was great. And, uh, I hope you have a. Time if we can maybe talk some more. <laughs> yeah. I hope you have a good uh detecting season this summer you'll have to keep track of uh let me know what you find oh yeah we'll 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 be in touch yeah, yeah feel free to post your finds on uh my ground view metal detecting site oh yes absolutely so absolutely. keep me up to date what's going on up there so okay all right, all right Ken. thanks don don thank munson you. cable wisconsin thank you you betcha take care buddy okay bye-bye bye-bye there we go all right, if uh, you're interested in getting into this great hobby, stop in and see me at Groundview Metal Detector Sales and Rental, 706 East Grand Avenue, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. I'm an authorized Whites and Garrett's dealer. I uh, hold a training session like we were talking about. If I can help you in any way and set you up with a machine, stop in and see me or give me a call. Until then, take care. And God bless.